guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here hey you just joined the littiest youtube ever i'm natasha aka the plug mommy you guys can follow me on my social medias i'm gonna you know right here and as you can tell by the title of this video today's video is going to be another surgery related video you guys seem to enjoy these they're doing well on my channel by well i mean i'm still not getting views but i do appreciate those who are watching my videos because Honestly, I don't have to share my business to strangers on the internet. I'm putting myself out there and putting my personal business out there to be a resource to other people. Because when I was researching, I saw, you know, not that many videos that really highlighted the entire journey. Like, I saw a lot of, like, videos where people would discuss their experience but not really get into much detail about, you know, cost and supplies and all that jazz. So... I kind of wanted to wait until I had all my supplies so I might do like a part two when I actually get everything but I'm just going to talk about all the supplies that you need. Some of them are no brainers and the other ones you might not know of so I'm also going to link my Amazon supply list below. Alright so first and foremost you need Fajas, obviously. So, included in your package, a lot of the times, they will include Fajas. So, I know included in my package is a Faja, but that's the Faja they put you in after surgery. And from what I heard, that Faja can kind of be like either, you know, ill-fitting or too loose or whatever the case may be. So, I recommend that you have backup Fajas, at least two. Um, I have two Fajas right now that fit me right now, but I don't know if these are going to be, like, fitting when after surgery. Because keep in mind, your body is going to be either very swollen, you know, you're not going to be your same measurements that you are right now. So, what I recommend and what I'm going to do when I go to Miami is I'm going to get it custom, you know, custom tailored to me. So that I have a Faja that fits. Because the last thing that you want is an ill-fitting Faja. You don't want anything to affect your healing process and I feel like Faja is definitely the most confusing thing for me because it's like the sizing and all that. That's what makes me very nervous is Faja. So I'm just going to, you know, skip all the BS and just get myself measured when I go out to Miami. Another thing that you need is a BBL pillow, especially if, you know, you don't want to be kneeling on the plane. You know, you're going to need that BBL pillow so that you're not kneeling. And, or if you drive and everything, because remember, you can't sit on your butt for six weeks. So you want to make sure that you're prepared with that BBL pillow. And I could link it below. I'll show you guys um, the one that I have. It was actually given to me. Oh, first, before I show you the BBL pillow, let me show you the Faja. The brand that I chose is called Maria E. Fajas. It's supposed to be really good. You know, it has a zipper at the bottom and everything how it looks and this size I believe is a 2x which fits me right now and it fits well so I don't know if this will be the proper faja for me after surgery I might need like a 3x or 4x or I don't know I'm gonna let them tell me when they measure me and I don't even this one is like shorter I didn't really like this one when I tried it on. I didn't like the crotch area. Like, this crotch area, I didn't like it. I feel like this is the type of faja that would give you chicken butt. And I'm not with it. So, I'm happy I have options. But I'm definitely going to, like I said, I'm definitely going to get a new faja when I get out there. This is the BBL pillow. Nothing really special. I kind of have to pass a lint brush on it because I have pets. But the brand is called Royal Comfort. It's just your very regular smuggler BBL pillow. It's very sturdy and comfortable. It's not cheap. It's good. Alright, so no matter if you're traveling out of state or out the country or if you're staying at home during, you know, your surgery recovery... You don't want your bed and or the bed that you're staying at, like at the Airbnb or the hotel, to get damaged. So an absolute need is you need to make sure that you cover your bed with either like a mattress protector or like a shower curtain. Because after surgery, you're going to be draining a lot and everything. So you don't want 
your bed to get messed up or the like I said the bed at the Airbnb or the hotel because they charge fees for that so just make sure that you know you protect your bed and everything ahead of time you also need chuck pads which is basically like higher quality puppy pads basically I mean I guess you could use puppy pads if you want but these are more like absorbent and everything because it's going to be like a lot of drainage so you know you're going to need to put those on the floor you're going to need to put those on the bed so that when you're draining it doesn't damage the floor or the bed or whatever the case may be so you're going to need a lot of those because I know people from what I've heard you tend to drain a lot within the first few days so you want to just be prepared I know on Amazon I have it saved to my list they have like a 150 pack now that might be a pain to um, carry all of those with you in your suitcase especially if you're trying to make room for everything you absolutely need to I guess you can use puppy pads and you can also buy that when you get out there so you can have more room in your suitcase another thing that you really need is you need compression socks they're gonna put you on a pair after surgery but you need to make sure that you continuously wear them and again everything that you're wearing your faha like everything is gonna get like stained with drainage so you're gonna you're gonna need to make sure that you have other compression socks to change into you're gonna need a lock box to keep all your personal belongings and everything because especially if you're staying at a recovery house you do not I've heard horror stories of people who stay at recovery houses and get their items stolen that's the last thing you want so in addition to making sure you're alert of your surroundings I know it's going to be difficult because you know you're going to be on medication you're going to be loopy you know you're going to be trying to rest so you know you got to just make sure that your your money everything all your valuables are locked up so you know they sell it on Amazon you can either get the one with the combination lock or just get the lock box it's super affordable I think it's like $15 on Amazon super cheap um, of course you're going to need Tylenol and a lot of it. <laughs> you're going to make sure you have comfy items. So that means robe, camisoles, because you never want to put the faja directly on your skin. You want to make sure you have seamless camisoles under your faja. Um, what else? Comfy slippers. In general, you're not going to want anything tight on your body. Like You're going to be in a lot of pain. Your body's going to be really sore and swollen. So you want to make sure that you have very loose fitting clothing. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a lot of sundresses, like loose fitting sundresses. If you want, get it like maybe like two size bigger so that way, you know, you're comfortable. That's the main thing. You want to be comfortable. You don't want to be in anything tight. Anything that's going to irritate you, you don't want to wear. So no jeans. Jeans is a big no-no. You shouldn't even be wearing jeans for like the first, you know, I think they said like first few weeks or five, like five weeks or so. You can't wear jeans. So you want like, you know baggy sweatpants, like comfortable clothes, um, Pedialyte, pineapple juice, aloe vera. That would definitely help with the healing process. Pineapple juice is supposed to be really good for like swelling, inflammation. Same thing with aloe vera. Pedialyte is to keep you um, hydrated. Clorox wipes, gloves, just to make sure that everything is sanitary. Everything is like clean, sanitary to avoid infections. You want to make sure that you wipe down everything you use, like wherever you sit, you know, toilet seat, everything to avoid to avoid infection. Peroxide. Peroxide is so important. You're going to need a lot of it in order to keep your fajas clean. Clean fajas. A clean faja makes a difference as far as preventing infection because not only does it take out you know blood and like drainage and stains and everything it's also disinfecting you're gonna need band-aids preferably waterproof and the band-aids will be to cover your incisions so that nothing gets inside like when you're showering and bathing so that you know not only will it keep the incisions dry, it'll avoid infection. Um, dial soap, of course, and this is useful for before surgery and after surgery. And also, you're going to want to make sure that you shower before surgery with Hybacleanse, which is a medical grade soap. 
and this will really make sure that you're buying everything is completely clean disinfected prior to surgery to avoid affection to inf I can't even speak to avoid infection what else I'm reading off of a list right now so I'm gonna link all this below um straws somebody told me straws is good to have because you know you're gonna be very weak and you know you're not gonna want to sit there and hold the cup I know it sounds silly but just having a straw just makes life easier especially if you're getting arm lipo you're gonna be very weak you know so just having a straw so that you can drink out of that's very helpful stool softener that's very important as well because a lot of people say that they were constipated after surgery so that's no fun so make sure that you have that um a female urinal now I know that there's like a lot of mixed things about which one to get so the one that I purchased is the one where you can actually where it has the chamber underneath where um it actually collects the pee in case you know you can't make it to the bathroom in time because I know a lot of girls say trying to make it to the bathroom and everything they end up peeing on themselves so just having the female urine just having the female urinal with the actual chamber that you compete into I think that'll make life a lot easier for a lot of people I know me I could barely hold my pee as it is so just the thought of having to run to the bathroom with a faha on and all that like that stresses me out and that gives me anxiety so I need to make my life easier throughout this process I want to be a part of but I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna link my Amazon um, list below with all my supplies I'll also write a list of like anything that's on the Amazon supply list I'll leave in the description below but another thing I really want to talk about is vitamins so pre-op you really need to take care of yourself in regards to taking your vitamins so that includes iron biotin collagen vitamin c um zinc um folic acid what else hey guys so the last of what i recorded the sound got messed up so i just wanted to say that i will make a part two when i actually get all my supplies i was reading off of a list so i was kind of getting like a little flustered and tongue-tied also i have not had my surgery yet so you know i could check in with you after my surgery and like also talk about what i used what i didn't use um i have a more detailed amazon list of everything that i need but again i don't know if um certain things i'm actually gonna need until i actually go through the process if you guys have any questions Feel free to leave a comment below. I'll answer any questions you guys may have regarding, you know, which faha to choose um, or, you know, anything really you guys can ask me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and follow me on my social media accounts. Thank you guys.